Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, just before I go any further, uh, just wondering if you can see the slides and hear me clearly. If you could just put a message in the chat box, a thumbs up, smiley face. Great. Thank you very much. So um, before we get into it, can we, um, I'd just like to ask everyone if they can turn off their notification settings in Blackboard. So um, if you can go to your settings and go to notification settings, so it should be in the bottom right hand corner of your screen if you're on a laptop or a desktop. Um, otherwise, if you're on a phone, you need to open up the uh, uh, this uh, collaborate uh, panel and turn off those. Uh, just just untick all those check boxes, and you won't get any pop-ups or sounds during the session. Okay, so today's webinar is a um, a course overview webinar. So. Um, we haven't done many of these in the past, but uh, we're hoping to do more of these in the future. Um, this is not a technical webinar um, that we that we usually run. Um, this is like a 30 minute overview of our professional certificate of competency in industrial automation. Um, and you'll get the opportunity to meet uh, the course instructor for the course, who is Dr. Hardy Hub, and the learning support officer or uh, as we more um, commonly uh, call them, they're our LSOs. And um, you'll get to meet Isabel Sabanda, um, who will be the LSO for this course and for this upcoming intake. And just to let everyone know, um, everyone that is registered for the webinar, all of you that are in the session today, um, you will receive a copy of the PDF slides and a link to the video recording within the next one to two business days via email. Um, just check your junk email folder as well, just in case you don't see it in your inbox. So if you're not familiar with EIT, I'll just give you a brief overview um, of us. So we are an engineering specialist education provider. Um, we run a range of uh, engineering courses um, from short courses that we call our, um, our professional certificate of competency courses, um, our diplomas, advanced diplomas. Um, we have courses in the higher education sector, so our undergraduate and graduate certificates, bachelor's and master's degrees, and also a doctor of engineering de uh, degree. Um, we have industry oriented programs, so that means our all of our courses are regularly reviewed um, to stay relevant with industry developments and, um, and changing technology. Our vocational programs and higher education degrees are registered and accredited by the Australian government. However, we do have um, some internationally recognised courses um, which come under uh, either the Sydney, the Dublin or the Washington Accord. We have industry experienced lecturers, so um, so this means that we don't just employ lecturers that are um, involved in academia, but uh, lecturers that are also have um, significant experience out in the field. And um, you'll see that from uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hardy Hub, who is the course instructor for this course and who will be presenting in this webinar today. Um, has a lot of experience in industrial automation and artificial intelligence. We have a unique delivery model, so that includes the use of these live and interactive webinars. Um, granted, uh, our class sizes are a lot smaller than, um, than these webinars that we run for free. Um, we have dedicated learning support offices, and we have state-of-the-art technologies such as hands-on workshops, remote laboratories, and simulation software. And we will be um, showcasing some uh, simulation software uh, towards the end of this uh, webinar, which is relevant to the content um, of this course. Um, so the agenda for today, um, I've just introduced the session. Um, shortly, you'll meet the learning support officer, who I mentioned is Isabel Sabanda. Um, 
we will go over the course structure and the learning support you will receive during the course. Then you will have the opportunity to meet the instructor, Dr. Hardy Hub, and he will run through um, the topics that will be covered during the course and some of the content. And um, lastly, um, he will go through some software demonstrations. So he'll be sharing his screen and show um, some of the software that we actually use in the course. And, uh, and then lastly, the uh, conclusion um, will be, uh, we'll have a Q and A uh, session, um, just a short Q and A session. If, if anyone has any questions, we'll stick around for as long as we can and answer as many questions as possible. So um, now I'll hand over to Isabel, um, who is one of our lead uh, learning support officers. Thank you very much, Isabel. Uh, thank you, Riley. Um, before I get started, can I just confirm if everyone can hear me? Can you all hear me? Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, uh, welcome again. Uh, as Riley has said, my name is Isabel Sivanda, and I'm one of the lead VIT learning support officers here at EIT. I've been working for the company um, for about 10 years now. Um, some of my qualifications are a cert for in training and assessment, a diploma in leadership and management, as well as another in marketing. So I'll just quickly go through the course structure um, for the CIA course, as well as um, explaining the kind of support that you're going to get from us here at EIT, because uh, you can imagine not everyone has studied online. So um, we need to reassure you that we're here to support you for the duration of your course. Okay, so um, you will have one course instructor as well as one learning support officer, which would be myself for the um, intake that uh, in April. So the course runs over three months and there's 12 topics uh, or modules that are spread out over those three months. So what's going to happen is during the first week, there are no webinars at all. This is the time that we give you guys to um, familiarize yourselves with Moodle. If you've paid for the course, you get uh, course access on the course start date. So the next intake begins on the 24th of April. There's not going to be a webinar um, during that week. The first webinar is only going to be during the second week. So during the first week, this is your time to download whatever material would be available on Moodle and download your webinar schedule, try and figure out what time the webinar will be in your location. Because um, like, the, uh, as you know, this is an online course and the number of people in different locations that will be uh, enrolled for the course. Okay, so we've got fort fortnightly live webinars. Each webinar um, runs for about 19 minutes. And uh, we cover two topics or two modules per webinar. So if you cannot attend the webinar, all webinars are recorded and they are made available to you via the uh, Blackboard uh, platform. So once you've got access to your course, if you miss a webinar, you are able to watch the recording uh, in order for you to catch up and then submit a summary to your learning support officer, which is myself, um, in order for you to um, boost your attendance score. So you will have a total of six webinars for the duration of your course, one webinar every fortnight. You will have access to Moodle, 24-7 um, uh, access to, to the learning support, to the learning management system, sorry, for the duration of your course. This is where you'll get your course materials um, as well as anything relating to assessments uh, and software related issues. Everything will be uploaded onto Moodle. So we always encourage students to access their Moodle page on a regular basis because we update all the course materials on your Moodle page. So Moodle is going to be your best buddy. If you do enroll for the course, uh, Moodle is going to be your best buddy for the duration of your course because that's where your studies are conducted from. 
All right. So we only close the course page once the course has completed, once we reach um, the course closure. And students are always informed well in advance of what they need to do for them to complete the course. And uh, we close the page once the course is done. Uh, we do not have uh, any formal uh, entry requirements for the CIA course because it's uh, merely for professional development. So there aren't any formal requirements for you to gain entry onto the CIA course. All right. Um, the next slide. You might wonder uh, how much time you will need uh, to be spending um, each week for you to complete this course. Um, by the way, if you've got any questions for me, please feel free to type on the chat box. Myself, uh, uh, Riley, as well as Hardy will be able to assist you uh, during the session or even afterwards. All right. So you'll be expected to spend at least uh, five to eight hours um, on your course each week. We understand that uh, most of you are currently working professionals. Um, so like I said, all our webinars are recorded and you will you can access the webinar at any time the recording at any time if you need to catch up even if you attend the webinar you can still revisit um the web uh, the, the webinar recording if you need to get clarity on certain aspects that you would not have understood during the webinar so you can always access your recording okay so uh duration uh, brian the course runs for three months there's six more uh, there's 12 modules and uh there's a webinar every fortnight. So it will take you three months to complete the course. You cannot complete it in less than three months because we've got a schedule on how the program runs. You cannot complete it in less than three months and release, release uh, materials at um, certain intervals. So the duration is three months. Hope that's clear. All right, so um, if you're wondering what should you do then to get your certificate of completion at the end of the course, what are the requirements, what do we need you to do? Um, all right, so uh, apart from the webinars that I've, been, I've mentioned, you also have to complete some assessments. So there's going to be two assignments um, that you need to complete. There's the first assignment that's completed after the first three sets of webinars. So after you attend webinars one, two, and three, there's going to be one assignment that will cover those first three webinars, right? And the minimum pass mark for your assignments is 60%. You need to get at least 60% for you to pass the assignment. As well as quizzes. After each webinar, there's going to be one quiz that you need to complete. And normally those quizzes are due within a week from the, from the date of the webinar. So if you've got a webinar today, um, the, uh, Wednesday, 29 March, we will have a quiz due next week, Wednesday, right? So you need to get 100% for the quizzes in order for you to be uh, marked as competent for that quiz. If you do not get 100%, um, after using up the three attempts that we give you for completing that quiz, we will give you, you uh, an, an opportunity to complete a quiz clarification form and rectify whatever question you would have missed um, on your quiz. So basically for you to be uh, competent, uh, you need to have at least 60% on each assignment as well as 100% for each and every quiz. The uh, um, attendance, webinar attendance requirement is 65%. This is basically four out of the six webinars that will be presented for the duration of the course. Right? So if you do not uh, manage to attend a webinar, I encourage you to watch the recording that will be available on your model page. Um, type out a summary, a brief summary, at least half a page, cover whatever main aspects would have been uh, presented during that webinar email that summary to myself, your learning support officer, and then after review, you will be marked as um, attended. So if you miss a webinar and then submit a summary, you get the same grade as a person who would have um, attended, you, you get the same attendance mark as a person who would have attended the live webinar, right? So you need to make sure that you, you've got at least 65% attendance rate, All right? So um, the course is merely for professional development purposes. 
it is not an accredited qualification. It's designed for upskilling only, right? So this, um, the CIA uh, certificate course is merely for upskilling. It is not an accredited course. Yes, um, Xian, we do sign uh, your, your certificates. Certificate of attendance. Uh, you get a certificate. You, you get a certificate for completing the course. Um, there's no certificate of attendance. Uh, we do sign it here at E18. Okay. Um, so the roles of your learning support officers are basically to uh, are mainly administrative. We encourage you to um, speak to us whenever you've got any issue. If you uh, can't attend the webinar, let me know. Um, if you can't submit your assignment on time, let me know and let me know, just explain whatever situation you'll be going through briefly and then I'll be able to help you with an extension. Uh, here's images of some of the EIT Learning Support Officer on the right hand side is Mandy who's based in our South African office and on, um, sorry, on the left hand side is Mandy and on my right is uh, Sharon who's based at our office in Perth. So we, this is just to let you know that we are not robots. Um, we are very, very welcoming people, very warm people. So if you do choose to uh, study with us, you will meet myself or any of uh, our other uh, dedicated learning support officers. And we're here to help you with any administrative queries that you may have during the course. So yeah, I do hope that we'll be seeing you um, very soon. I will now hand over to the instructor, uh, Dr. Hadi Hub, who's going to be presenting our next intake in April. Thank you, everyone. Great. Uh, thank you, Isabel. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Great. So let me share the, the video. Great. Uh, okay, so welcome. Uh, my name is Harry Harp. I'm based in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, so I will be uh, presenting this um, this uh, course to you. Um, it's been like around 20 years where I work in the area of uh, in artificial intelligence, signal processing, uh, computer programming, uh, industrial automation. So different areas, and I had the chance to work as an engineer, as a researcher, as a uh, founder of a company and manager of this company and a lecturer. Uh, and typically I do teach, uh, I provide, uh, I'm the instructor in several uh, professional certificates, advanced diplomas at EIT and the master program. Okay. Let's take a look rapidly. In fact, we're not going to spend too much time. Clearly, it's just an overview of what is covered in this course. So this course, we cover uh, these points here. Okay, the building blocks of automation, the types of automation of control systems, process control and instrumentation, tuning of controllers, mechanical, electrical, and electronic systems, programmable logic controllers, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, safety systems, networking, and cyber physical systems. The highlighted ones that you see here, let me highlight them. Uh, these here are ones where we are going to see software today. So we'll, I'll, I'll spend a few minutes showing you these software tools, okay? Because as you know, in the modern world, always you are going to use software tools to do simulation, to do design, and clearly to do control and automation. So. Let's take a look rapidly at what do we mean by every, every element here, and then we'll get into the software. The building blocks in automation. So in this course, we will be um, covering of why do we need automation? Why in the first place we need automation and how to build that control system to introduce this automation. As you know, you would need automation uh, whenever you want to replace a human operator by some machine and automation in many, many cases, it solves a problem of precision, uh, of uh, you would minimize errors, human errors, humans make errors and mistakes all the time. Uh, automation means that you would have systems that are 
going to operate 24 seven all the time. Uh, so you can imagine a process like this one here. Here's a process on the right where we want to produce coffee, coffee and we will bottle it and sell it. Okay, so we have here sugar, we have here coffee powder, we have milk, we have water, and all of these should be mixed together in this mixer, heated, and we use a steam boiler to produce steam and heat it, and then send them to bottles and bottle them. A process like this, you, you necessarily want to use some automation in there. You want to ensure that by pushing a button, the right amount of sugar, of coffee, of milk, of water will be mixed together. And you will be ensuring that the temperature of mixing will be guaranteed. Like I want to mix at, let's say 90 degrees Celsius. And then I want to, uh, to, to pasteurize or, or to, um, uh, to heat this, this whole mixture for let's say 100 and 120 degrees Celsius for a few seconds. I want to control all of this and then send them to bottles and after all of this, you would want eventually to clean, okay? You want to flush the different pipes and do the cleaning. Well, this is a great situation where you would want to do automation, okay? So automation, we'll, we'll discuss in this course why we need automation and some examples of automation. Now, to build a control system, you need a controller. The controller is a kind of machine like a computer that decides what should be done at any moment. It's like the replacement of the human who makes the control actions. And in terms of control, we are going to mention what is on-off control, what is open-loop control, and what is closed-loop control. Now, on-off control is something that you most probably are familiar with, like a thermostat. This is on-off control. Open-loop control is when your controller acts on the process without looking at the results. It's what you have in when you are dealing, for example, in a washing machine. A washing machine does not look if the um, whatever you are washing is clean. It's just going to implement a control action and gives you the result. Closed loop control or feedback control is where you use a sensor and you feed back this information to always keep a certain variable at a target. It's like in a heating process. We look at the temperature. If the temperature is not at our, our desired value, we are going to act. If I want to pasteurize this milk, for example, I want to keep the temperature at 70 degrees Celsius for five minutes. So if my temperature drops below the 70 degrees Celsius, I'm going to do an action, like I will introduce more steam. If it's above, I will decrease the amount of steam. And all of this is done automatically via a controller. Now, a term that's used is called process control. Process control is when you deal with processes that produce products in a continuous fashion. Like you are continuously introducing cold milk here, and this is a process, and you are the, the output of the, the, the process is pasteurized milk. And it's done like continuously at one liter per, uh, per minute, one liter per second, whatever. This is a continuous process. So you see it a lot in food processing, you see it in oil and gas, these types of processes. And the control of these processes is when you use sensors to measure whatever you are intending to keep at under control. You use actuators to act, like you'd use pumps, you'd use valves, and the famous controllers to make a decision. In these areas, we do modeling, we, we model processes mathematically, and this is what we'll be mentioning in this um, uh, in this course. A software, an excellent software for simulation is this one that we are going to see just in a moment. And then you have tuning. Now a controller, when you design a controller, the controller would have some parameters. And those parameters, we need to find those parameters. We call this, pro this concept tuning controllers. And in this course, we are going to see how we tune the, those controllers. For example, in a software, also an excellent software called MATLAB, that will help us tune controllers. And this is something that we'll be seeing in a moment. And then what we'll be covering also is a, a rapid overview of mechanical, electrical, and electronic systems that are at the core of automation, uh, from uh, pneumatic and hydraulic systems with their valves, compressors, AC and DC drives, like in electrical systems, so motors that you would use, 
electronic components, embedded systems that you would use. So all of these are part of any automation system that you will build. So we'll be reviewing them rapidly without getting into a lot of details, but we'll review them rapidly in this course. And then you have the important programmable logic controllers, the types of controllers that you see in the grand majority of cases when you are automating. So these are the types of computers that you program to do control. So we are going to see them in this course and we'll program them. So we'll see how we'll program them. And we'll see in a moment an example of a software that you can use to program them and to do simulation. So simulation and actually programming in practice. And then you have SCADA. So what if you, you are gathering your data from a process in different locations and you want to create a, a computer screen where operators can supervise the process, can act on the process? Well, this is where you use SCADA systems, supervisory control and data acquisition. And we're going to see a software that will allow you to do so. Let's take a look at it, navigate a little bit in it to see how things work. SCADA. And then you have safety systems. In any industrial application, there are hazards. And in general, you have to develop some safety systems to keep the process safe. And those safety systems would look like control systems, but they are for safety. OK? So will the, they will act when everything else fails, and they will protect us. So we'll be looking into safety standards and the concept of risk assessment in industrial applications. And finally, the trends, the trends that are networking and cyber physical systems. So networking, interconnecting different sensors, different actuators, controllers, computers, locally, but also over the internet. So we'll be mentioning some concepts of what's called the internet of things and this industry 4.0 concept where devices can communicate with each other to control a process and these devices do not necessarily all, uh, have to be in the same location. They could be really in remote locations. So the networking. Okay. Now, uh, let us rapidly uh, take a look at some software tools that we are going to see in this, uh, in this course. I'm going to share my screen. And please let me know if you can see my screen once I share it. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, great, great. So let's take a look at some software tools that we are going to see in this, in this course. Uh, the first one is this one here, I'm going to start a debugging. This is a software, it's called CodeSys, that allows you to program controllers. The great thing about it, it allows you to program controllers like our PLCs, programmable logic controllers, and at the same time allows you to create simulations. So you will test your system before you deploy it. So here I build a simple uh, application where I have, I, I can switch this here, and a few seconds later, boom, this lamp will turn on. So it's like I added a delay. Flip, boom, it turns on. Okay. I add a counter, like a count, one, two, three, and this will turn on. So each time I treat like three different things, it's going to turn on. And then I can reset it, boom, here. One, two, three, and I can reset it. So this is a type of software that we use in this course and very, very useful if you ever want to program a controller like a programmable logic controller. So we can take a look at it. You can see how the program is actually done. This is the, the actual program and the simulation with the visualization. This is one, one type of, of software that we'll be looking into. Another one is the uh, SCADA. So SCADA, this is a software called SciDect, uh, and it allows you to create different uh, interfaces to create interfaces allowing operators to visualize the process. So let's take a look at it here. So I'm going to run it over on the software. So think of it like you created this interface, you program them to allow operators to visualize a process and uh, supervise it and control it. So here it's going to run. OK. 
Here we go. So this is the typical interface of a SCADA application. I can look at the alarms. I can see all the alarms that are available here. Uh, so there are some alarms. I can go back to my main screen. I can see my process of food and beverage. I can stop things, turn them on, okay? So this is the kind of things that you can do. I can look at the trends of certain variables. I'm plotting and I'm scanning over time, okay? Uh, so this is a SCADA system. So this is a uh, site at SCADA. And we have uh, the excellent software here also for simulation. So this is for simulation, it simulates process control. Now here, it shows you some PV. PV means, meaning a process variable, like temperature. You want to control temperature. And out is the controller output. And I can see what happens, for example, if I change my output to 20. I see how my temperature will change. OK? Uh, I can simulate situations where I have noise or load. Here, load is changing. Load is changing. It's like you are introducing more or less say milk to pasteurize, and you can see what happens to temperature. I can make this controller in automatic mode. Automatic mode, it tries to keep the temperature at this target here, the set point here. So if I move the set point up, the controller should it do, it does its job so that the temperature actually follows it, it tries to get to the set point, okay? And then I can tune the controller, meaning I can select those parameters here. And how do we get those parameters? Well. To get those parameters, this is where we can use a software like MATLAB to tune a controller. So this is something that we can see. Like here, let me create a uh, model for a system. And P equals 1 divided by 4S plus 1. This is a model for a system. And we can use the software tool to tune a controller for this system. Now, modeling, we'll mention it in this course, how we can model a system. What do we mean by it? And then you can use a software tool like this one to tune your controller and to get the controller parameters. So we can show the parameters found. And then we can decide, what do I want? If I want my controller to be fast, I change it like this. I want to be aggressive. I change this like this. And it shows me what are the parameters I should be using and how my controller will respond. Okay, so this is if I change my set point, my target from zero to one, how my controller will respond. Okay, so this is rapidly what we are intending to do in this course. Okay, so I see there's other programs that we could use to program uh, codes during the course. Typically, uh, in this course, it is CodeSys for programming the programmable logic controls. It's mainly CodeSys, OK? So hand it over to Riley. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hardy. Um, really appreciate it. So um, before we wrap up this session, um, if anyone uh, would like to view the course page uh, for this course, um, I would encourage you to scan the QR code or um, I can put the link in the chat box for you. Um, so the next intake of this course will be starting um, on the 24th of April. And we encourage you to get your application in as soon as possible. If you would like to, um, if you'd like to start on this course. Um, as Isabel mentioned earlier in the uh, presentation, um, there are no formal entry entry requirements for this course. Um, it's it's uh, mainly for professional development. So if you do visit the course page and you would like to, um, if you'd like to apply, all you need to do is book now um, and that will um, take you to a short inquiry form. And once you fill out that inquiry form, you'll receive a email from one of our course advisors um, with the program information. Um, and there will be an application link to start your application. And 
um, these are some upcoming technical webinars. If you would like to register for those, we run a range of free uh, technical webinars every month. And um, these are two upcoming ones that you would like uh, that you might like to register for. Um, one in civil engineering uh, and one in electrical. And now we'll just um, finish the session with a short Q&A. <clears throat> and if anyone does have any questions, please put them in the chat box and we'll try and um, answer them for you as quickly as possible. I'll just skip to the last slide. So if anyone needs to go, thank you very much for attending today. Um, all of our contact details are on the screen, but just let us know if you have any questions. Uh, I think you might be able to answer this question, Hardy, but someone's asked about the, um, the software that you've, um, that you've shown uh, just before. Um, I believe those, are those ones freely accessible or um, most of them are paid softwares? Uh, the codes of software that I uh, shared the link is free available. Uh, MATLAB is uh, is not freely available, but a version could be uh, obtained with a, um, like an accessible uh, price. Uh, but we, we what's important is that all these software tools we have them accessible in remote lab at the IT. So once you are part of the course, you have access to these software tools. Great, thank you. Um, and Andy, I think in terms of uh, CPD hours. Um, I believe a lot of people use these um, short courses to, uh, you know, to submit with applications to different engineering um, institutions or uh, accreditation bodies um, if they're looking for CPD hours. Even our um, free technical webinars, just our short one hour technical webinars that we run every month. Um, some people like to collect the certificate of attendance for, uh, attendances for those. Um, just to show that they're um, uh, extra activities outside of um, outside of normal study. Uh, Portia, um, we have a course page. I'll just put the link in the chat box again. Um, that will take you to the uh, the course page um, for this particular course. Um, if you'd like to view the program structure. Um, and any other details on the course can be accessed there. Uh, Ramzan, um, unfortunately, this is just a course overview webinar, so we won't be providing a certificate for this session today. Uh, Aduwu, um, if you just go to the course page, um, you'll get a short uh, overview of the course, as well as um, if you go down to the uh, the drop down menus, there are also, um, uh, there's a program structure, uh, there's fees and payments, um, you can, uh, you can have a look at all the information on there. Uh, Emmanuel, you might need to speak to um, your learning support officer if you're a current student with us. Um, that might be the best course of action if you would like to join this course as well. Uh, Nelson, um, as, as mentioned, this is a uh, more of a professional development course for uh, working professionals. Um, it's not a qualification as such, but it is a, um, it's a short course uh, that can be of value um, to your, you know, your current knowledge and skill set. If anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Hi, Amo. Um, if you scroll down to fees and payments on the course page and select your um, country of residence, um, you will you will see the uh, the course fee for this for this course. Um, 
uh, fees are dependent on your country or region. Don't believe we have any scholarships for our professional certificate programs, Philip. Yeah, everyone will receive an email within 24 hours of uh, with the PDF slides and the recording of this webinar today. Erwin, um, I'm based in Perth, Western Australia. Um, our head office is based based here, um, so that's Australian Western Standard Time. Uh, Aduwu, there will be a certificate of completion given to people who complete the professional certificate course. If anyone was um, was late um, to the webinar today, everyone will receive a copy of the slides and the video recording. Hi, Amo. Um, we do have physical offices in Africa. Um, we have another head office based in um, South Africa. Uh, Eugene, um, it is based on your current con uh, current country of residence, I believe. So where you are, um, where you will be studying the course. Uh, Sastika. Um, we do have um, a Master of Engineering in Industrial Automation Engineering. If you're um, interested in that, please um, please go to our website and look for, look for that course if you're interested in a master's program. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate your, your comment. Uh, Enrico, um, our Perth office is uh, is open on weekdays. Um, so if you would like to visit our, um, our head office, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, I would recommend giving us a call. Let us know you're, um, you're coming in if you'd, if you'd like to do that. And um, you can speak to one of our uh, course advisors who'll be more than happy to help you. Leslie, uh, we don't have any um, on-campus courses um, at in South Africa at the moment. Um, we have we only have on-campus courses in Australia, either our Perth or Melbourne campuses. Um, but otherwise our, our courses are delivered fully online. Um, it's just the exception of our bachelor's, master's and doctor of engineering degree that can also be studied on campus in Australia. Uh, we don't have a PhD in biomedical engineering. We do have a, an advanced diploma in bio, biomedical engineering, if you're interested in that. Uh, 
Uh, we don't have a Master of Engineering degree in Engineering Management, unfortunately. We do have a um, diploma, an advanced diploma in Engineering Management, if you're interested in that. Ida Wu, I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for, um, but if if you reach out to one of our course advisors, they might be able to help you with that. But if you're interested in civil engineering, we have um, a range of uh, civil engineering is one of our main um, fields, and we have um, a range of courses in uh, courses and degrees in that field. David, we have a range of partial scholarships that you can view on our website. Um, it's just unfortunately we don't have any scholarships for our professional certificates or short courses. Uh, Sunday, um, payment uh, is dependent on your country or region. Um, we deal with several different currencies, so it'd be best to check uh, to go to the course page and um, select your country of residence and then um, you will see the total fees and um, the correct currency. Kennedy, unfortunately, there's no certificate of attendance for this session. Today is just a course overview webinar um, and not a technical webinar. Uh, Eugene, um, this is a professional development course. Um, it's not an accredited course. Um, as such, it's, uh, it's just a short course, uh, mainly targeted at working professionals, uh, which you can um, add to your uh, your resume um, and yeah, gain gain technical knowledge and skills out of it. But it's not it's not a qualification. Um, I do woo, yes, um, uh, we have, we had definitely have um, courses in mechanical, electrical, engineering, um, and a lot of our courses do use AutoCAD. Um, so I would definitely recommend reaching out to us. Um, one of our course advisors will be able to point you in the right direction um, for what course you might be, um, you might be suited for, depending on your um, your work experience and uh, your any qualifications that you may hold. I'm not sure of the your question, Ammo. Um, it might be best to reach out to one of our course advisors for for your query. Um, our masters, uh, our masters courses um, for for accreditation. Um, please go to our accreditation page on our website under YEIT. Um, and you will see all the accreditation information there. But we do have courses that are accredited uh, by the um, uh, by the council in South Africa. Sunday, um, if you would like to, uh, if you'd like to reach out um, to us regarding the bachelors in industrial automation, you can send me an email to webinars at eit.edu.au, which is on the screen, um, and one of our course advisors can um, can assist you further with that. Any queries, um, if you would like to send an email, just please send it to the email on the screen um, and I can 
I can point you in the right direction. Uh, Philip, um, as far as I'm aware, the, certif uh, the professional certificate um, does not give you any exemptions in the advanced diploma, um, but um, that uh, that is a good question. I I can follow that up for you, um, but at at this stage, I, d I don't I don't think so. There's only one of our professional certificates. I think it's our um, a professional certificate in hydraulics and pneumatics um, that grants credit for a unit in our one of our bachelor's degrees. Um, but I, as far as I'm aware, I don't believe the certificates give any exemptions for modules in the advanced diploma. Uh, Yubong. Um, so our courses are definitely tailored to suit full-time workers. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we do provide, um, uh, you know, different times for our webinars. Um, our webinars are recorded as well in case um, the timing does not work or you miss a session. Um, but yes, yeah, so all, of, all of our, uh, you know, our, our courses, especially our short courses, um, you know, it's it's designed to fit around full time work. Um, you spend roughly five to eight hours per week um, with study and uh, attending webinars. Um, so yeah, mo most of our most of our students are are working full time, and um, yeah, we have students from studying from all around the world. Uh, Olo you see, uh, Olo say, sorry. Um, if you want to find courses that are accredited, um, such as internationally or nationally accredited, please, please visit our accreditation page. I'll just link you to that page now. I'll put that in the chat box. So there's a range of courses. Um, our um, our vocational courses are uh, registered and accredited in Australia uh, as our um, higher education degrees and qualifications are. Um, and we do have a range of uh, internationally recognized qualifications as well now. I can't see any further questions for now. Um, but thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, and we, we hope to see you on the course if you would like to join the course. Um, but if you have any further questions, just please let us know. Um, you can reach out to one of our course advisors um, who can assist you with any uh, further course inquiries. Um, feel free to send me an email to webinars at eit.edu.au um, and we'll respond to you as quickly as possible. And I'll just put that, um, I'll just put that link in the chat box again for that uh, to the course page. Um, so this is the CIA course page uh, covered today. My email address webinars at eit.edu.au. Otherwise, um, thank you very much, Dr. Hardy and Isabel, uh, for presenting today. And uh, uh, I hope everyone in the session enjoyed um, enjoyed everything. And uh, just as I said, let us know if you need any further information about the course or EIT. Um, we're more than happy to help. And thanks all. Have a have a great day wherever you are. We'll see you next time.